Uvla Lotak. Welcome to worship at Utkyagvik Presbyterian Church this morning, where we are all blessed to be together in unity to worship the Lord our God during this Advent season, preparing for the birth of Jesus Christ on Christmas. Reverend Joseph Reed is weathered in in Nuixit, where he traveled with other pastors and church members to offer a service called Spiritual Recovery that was from 6 to 9 on Thursday night in Nuixit, and we're so happy he had the opportunity to do that. We are thankful for his energy and his commitment to God's work and to this church. We pray for his safe return. Our call to worship this morning is a celebration of the second Sunday in Advent as we focus on the peace Jesus Christ brings to all of us. We ask the Saren family to come forward and light the second candle, the candle of peace. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I believe that I shall wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Although these are not my immediate family, I consider them family because we are part of the family of God. We may not be in original Barrowites, but we feel welcome to be part of the Otkal Presbyterian Church. Please, your, your paper is on the side. Sorry if we seem so disorganized. It's your turn. Um, our own family could not be here, but um, I consider all of you, all of you, to be my family because we're part of God's family. And I thank God that 
you would have a muse are not stingy to let us be joined. Psalm 27, um, verses 4. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in this dwelling. Psalm 27, verse 5. that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Psalms 27, 6, 6b. At his tabernacle will I sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. And I will literally sing because it says. Um, and the song is, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the light, the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Thank you, family. Thank you very much, Saren family and family. Let us welcome let us welcome any guests or visitors we may have with us in the service today. Any guests or visitors or anyone that you'd like to introduce? All right. If not, let us now welcome one another by saying to one another, the peace of Christ be with you and responding and also with you. Let us pass the peace of Christ.
This is so wonderful that we can welcome each other. Please be seated, and we'll go to the announcements. Uh, Miranda Brown, will, Miranda Rexford Brown, will be giving us the announcements this morning. Thank you, Miranda. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Presbyterian Church announcements for December 10, 2017. Adult Sunday School was this morning at 9.30 a.m. Morning worship service, 11 a.m. Evening worship service, 7.30 p.m. Radio broadcast, 9.30 until 11.30 p.m. tonight. Children's Church and Sunday School lesson today at 2 p.m. K3, K4, all the way to 12th grade. Wednesday is the midweek worship service, 7.30 p.m. We also have teachers and volunteers meetings on Thursdays at 6.30. The last Sunday class lesson for this year will be December 17. So we have children's class December 10 and 17. The Christmas pageant practice is on Mondays and Fridays, two nights a week, 6.30 till 8. The pageant titled The True Meaning of Christmas will be presented to you December 24 at 7 p.m. And that's the night, December 24, you bring in the refreshments. The Board of Deacons have food distribution dates on the second Tuesday of each month. This month, it will be given out December 12. The office is open 9.30 to 3.30, Monday through Friday. If you have emergencies, call the cell phone, 367-6428. We also sponsor AA meetings and NA meetings. Thank you. Thank you for those announcements, Miranda. Our opening hymn is 139, Great is Thy Faithfulness. 139 in the blue book, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Let's have the children come forward for the children's sermon. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the Good morning. I am so happy to see all of you here this morning because I know that you all are in the Christmas pageant and you're all doing a wonderful job. And I thank you so much for rehearsing on Mondays and Fridays and coming to Sunday school um, every Sunday. It's been really good to see all of you. Today I wanted to talk about an important part of this season that we call, can anyone tell me what we call this season? That's part of it. It starts with an A. Do you remember, John? Advent. Could you say that again? Advent. Exactly. It is Advent. It's a time when we wait for Jesus' birth, and Jesus' birth is usually on what day? Christmas. Christmas. Yes. So we wait for Jesus' birth on Christmas. Today, we lit two candles. Do you see up there? Two, and I should probably say this to the congregation as well, two purple candles, because it is the second week in Advent. And the uh, theme that we focus on during the second week of Advent is the peace that Jesus brings to us all. Can you say that, the peace that Jesus brings to us all? And very good. So what we do during each of our church services every day of the year to remember that is when we get up to greet one another at the beginning of the service, we say, let me use you as an example, the peace of Christ be with you, and then you say to me, and also with you. And also with you. Could you try that with each other? Choose a partner and say, shake their hand and say, the peace of Christ be with you, and then say, and also with you. And how about in the back row? Will you do? Will you shake hands with her as well? So remember that one of the things that Jesus brings during this time of the year is peace. You can go back to your seats. Thank you. Jesus loves little children. Jesus loves. One of the important things that we do in every service is our prayer of confession with our assurance of pardon. Um, Edith Nagiak will come and lead us in our prayer of confession and our assurance of pardon. Thank you. Let us do the... Let us do the prayer of confession together, please. Dear God, we lower our heads before you, and we confess that we have too often forgotten that we are yours. Sometimes we carry on our lives as if you don't exist, and we fall short of being a credible witness to you. For these things, we ask your forgiveness. We also ask for your strength. Give us clear minds and open hearts so we may witness to you in our world. Remind us to be who you would have us to be, regardless of what we are doing or who we are with. Hold us to you and build our relationship with you and with those you have given us on earth. A moment of silence.
God's life giving word and spirit conquer the powers of sin and death. Thanks be to God for the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Edith. Presentation of tithes and offering. May we have four volunteers for the presentation of tithes and offerings. Two adults and two children. <laughs> Hebrews 13 verse 6 says, Do good and share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Let us bring our tithes and offerings to God.
please stand for the doxology. Edith Nagyak and I will now join together with prayers of the people. Edith? We are family and prayers for community sobriety. Please pray for Kel Kellen, Senior, Vera, Pris Priscilla, Elden, Amelia, Brandy, John. Lucas, Janessa, Randy, Matthew, Cullen Jr., Brandon, Sheldon, and Aaron. Please pray for Kenton, Billy Kenton and his family. Please pray for a child with asthma, Glenn, and James Okumayak's Amal. Please pray for the Simmons family and Brower family, for Jane Brower at hospital and Iktedlak and Wilson family and Uyarak family. Please pray for Harold and Kathleen uh, and Sunday school program for guidance, protection, discernment, protection, and peace. And for Kathleen, health, guidance, protection, and peace. And for the Sunday School program, give us all strength and guidance, discernment, understanding. Any other prayer requests?
Thank you. Thank you very much. Keep coming back. Raymond Panyak family and Anaktuvak past people. Chris Packett for his health. Richard Itta, Glenn Nasharnik, and family. I can't, I couldn't hear that. Oh, Annie. Please. Put, yes, I was just going to say my brother Roy. Thank you. The Holy Spirit is real. Roy Nayak. Lloyd and Kathy Edwards. James Nayak for his healing. Walton Kittick. Yes. Tori Sims. Tori Sims. I spoke and college kids traveling home for Christmas. Kids traveling. High school and kids traveling home from school. Safe travel. Unspoken request. Safe travels for Mike and Esther this week. <laughs> and to add to that, safe travels for me and the kids that are spending a lot of a week at home. This coming Friday again, I won't be back for a week or so. It's a long journey. People that are in person. Alice. Kamak's daughter, Michelle, Trisha. Koyana. Please pray for all the children in the Christmas time. All the children and all the teachers. Thank you. We thank them very much. Thank God for the teachers and the people that are planning the Christmas pageant.
Let us keep all of these requests, and God knows that he, that those requests are heard as we offer these prayers of the people followed by the Lord's Prayer. Edith read the prayer request. Please join us in this prayer, which will include two sections of silence where we can offer our individual prayers for God based on the prayer lists that we've heard. Let us pray. Most loving God, you are the ground of all being, the source of all light, of all love, of all creation. We are deeply thankful for all you gave, created, and our place in it. We are thankful that you call us each by name and that you ask us to follow you. We are thankful that you are ever inviting us to join you on this journey of life and faith. In silence, hear our prayers of gratitude for all that we have been given. Most loving God, in the midst of your amazing creation, there is still much in need of your care. May our heal, your healing presence be with those who are vulnerable during this season. We pray especially for those who are grieving, homeless, aged, weary, hungry, lonely, or ill. We ask that you use us to offer hope. We lift up the needs of all your beloved children, dear Lord, whatever those needs may be and the needs that we've heard Edith read. In the silence, hear our prayer. Most loving God, we give you thanks that you hear us and we trust that you answer us. Through Christ, in Christ, and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. We now offer you the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. We will now hear the Old Testament reading that is Psalm 133, found on page 970 in your Pew Bibles, which will be read also in a new path. Thank you. Psalms 133, some in your bed. Take Kanutun <laughs> Ochroch, 
siningin nyo agalan kalagawang isa. Iryo si kaktok uguhratun e kime herman mitotun kataktotun kime rangin yun zayan tabrani tabratan gom unek sokli unek sokli siging aga kubea sagun Inyugun isu hrayak kadi mo kalungi kaya nakanyaga din kahit in Psalms 133 in Inupia I mean um English 133 page 970 in your Red Bible. Let us read Psalms 133. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down upon the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. For there the Lord bestows his blessing, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our congregational hymn is God is so good on page 193. Our Old Testament, excuse me, our New Testament reading has been changed from what is in the bulletin. The New Testament reading is Matthew 11, 28 through 30, which is on page 1514 in your Pew Bibles, and in your Inupiat Bible, it's on page 34 and 35. Let me repeat that. The New Testament reading is Matthew 11, 28 through 30, on page 1514 in the Red Pew Bible, and page 34 and 35 in your Inupiat Bible. Let us listen to the word of God. Gospel in Matthew, Vahitahataha, Vesuwa Valu, Ketorunoa. How can I walk in Motoru Kotope, Okfaka Mosia, Momafasia? But they Fakamalo or Lok in Motor. I ek we okay, get a Motoru, the Mowako Yatiao. He go Faka Taki, Moanga, Fakatua, but the Mo Ilo Hamalo or Lok, Ihomola Marie. He go Yoke, Aku, Okmolu, 
pe koe ka venga a aku oku ma'a ma'a. Amen. O Kaluik Suan in Matthew 11, 28, 29, and 30. Kailusi ubam nun una nguek sisitchi, sigitchi. Ilokasi o kumai liraktuasi ungerisa revluwich pelutisi akuktuktao nikrak silo gadmun Kaisi che uvam nun una nguek sek si chu magip si anu kasiu ti si che uvam nun asi ilisaglu si uvam nin kanok uvanga pe akluk tangi chunga kimaksali yai chunga lo asi una Nguek ser neak tu si, kanok anu ay chutiga ilip sing nun nam magtok. Asi suli sabak rak pirak riu tigi neak kaka ilip sing nun nag niru tao neang itchok. Gadim ukalungit. Kuya Nagnerratin. And now the same scripture in English Matthew eleven, verses twenty eight, twenty nine, and thirty. Hear the word of the Lord. Come to me. All you are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The words of Jesus. Thanks be to God. Please bow your heads and pray with me. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit. And as your word is proclaimed, that we may hear with joy what you say to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Come to me. All you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. What I have observed recently is that many of us are weary and we're carrying heavy burdens and we're in need of rest. Would you agree that we are weary and in need of rest? When I ask my friends and colleagues, how are you doing during this season of Advent? and myself, they often honestly say, and I honestly say, ah, I'm exhausted. So that's why I would like us to examine what the Bible says we should do when we are weary, carrying heavy burdens, overwhelmed and exhausted. In reflecting on Matthew 11:28, a phrase kept popping into my head that I think used to be said by my grandmother, and I don't think I always listened to her really carefully. She talked a lot, so sometimes I just tuned her out, as grandchildren sometimes do to their grandparents. But um, she would say, no rest for the weary. Have you ever heard that? Or then I was thinking, or was it no rest for the weary, or was it no rest for the wicked? I couldn't remember, so I decided to investigate the origin of these phrases. So I looked it up in dictionary.com. Aren't we thankful for the internet? And um, it said that no rest for the weary meant you must keep persevering no matter how tired and overworked you are. But then another note said a variant is no rest for the wicked, 
which implies that the devil will not allow his followers to rest from their evil doings. I could believe that, but not satisfied. I consulted Wikipedia, which suggested that no rest for the wicked actually originated from the book of Isaiah, chapter 48, verse 22, that says, there is no peace for the wicked. In contrast, in today's gospel, Jesus promises rest for weary souls who come to him. He says that difficult yokes and heavy burdens can be replaced instead with his easy yoke and light burden. By talking about yokes, Jesus used an illustration common to his time. Justin the martyr, who wrote in the second century, suggested that as a carpenter, Jesus probably made yokes. A yoke was usually made out of wood and fit across the shoulders of an animal or a person who was using it. The purpose of the yoke was to harness the power of the animal or the person so that they could carry a very heavy load. To the religious leaders of Jesus' day, who were the scribes and Pharisees, a yoke was a metaphor for the difficult but joyous task of obedience to the Torah or the Jewish laws, which they followed to the letter. To Jesus at that time, their yoke was a bit too heavy, and it needed to be replaced with an easier yoke and a lighter burden. My guess is that at all times, all of us feel burdened and are in need of rest. Would you agree? In their original context, the gospel verses spoke specifically of those who were burdened by Jewish law. God gave the law to the Jewish people through moral thickets of life, to help them through the moral thickets of life so that they would know what to do. But some of the well-intentioned religious leaders embellished or made more the law until it became its own thicket, much, much more difficult for people to follow. While the original context of this verse referred to the burden of the Jewish law, there is nothing in these words to suggest that they should not also extend to our weariness and our burdens today. Even though we don't observe every Jewish law, we do observe some. As Christians, we certainly become weary, and we certainly carry heavy burdens. My observation is that we are wearied and burdened by many things. Busyness at work, concerns about our job, marriages, money, health, children, security, loss, grief, old age, tough decisions, criticism, opposition, loneliness, and a thousand other things. And we are also burdened by guilt, by fear, or by anxiety. But the very good news is that Jesus' concern for our burdens is real, and it's as real as his concern for the law-burdened Jews of his day. His beautiful and gracious invitation is also as real. Jesus says, come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. So how do we respond to that invitation of Jesus? Some of us are able to turn things over to God pretty easily. Perhaps you are really good at remembering that you are not alone and that Jesus is standing beside you saying, come to me, and you go to him. Perhaps you have learned that you are strongest when you ask for God's help. Perhaps your first impulse when struggling with a tough problem or heavy burden is to, as it is often said, let go and let God. If this describes you, well done. Some of us forget, however, that God is there for us. Or we trust that God is there, but we really don't think Jesus is talking to us. Remember, Jesus was speaking in the plural when he issued his invitation. He was speaking not only to disciples, but to everyone, everywhere, for all time and forever. He said, come to me all. Are you weary? 
then that includes you. Do you have burdens, big or small? Then you qualify. So those are two things. Thirdly, some of us don't want to need help. We want to do it ourselves to prove that we are independent, muscling our way through anxiety by ourselves as proof of our strength and ability, not realizing that, as Jesus suggests, it doesn't have to be as difficult as we make it. We, cel we celebrated Independence Day um, in July um, when our country became independent from England. Sometimes we want to be independent in every way contrary to our belief as Christians that it is a very good thing to be dependent on God. In our gospel passage today, Jesus gives thanks for those who really understand the freedom of being dependent. It sounds strange, doesn't it? Depend on God and you will be independent. And then, thirdly, some of us want to handle things by ourselves rather than use our strength which comes from handing over our burdens over to Christ. We are like the Pharisees and the scribes of Jesus' day. We think we know what is best. Too often we are like the mountain climber in the old joke that you've probably heard a million times who slipped and fell off a difficult click. He grabbed a branch and held on as tightly as he could and he shouted, Is anyone up there? Help me. A voice came from the skies that said, I am the God who loves you. I will save you if you let go of the branch. The climber thought for a moment and then yelled, Is there anyone else up there? Too often, we are reluctant to let go. But as Jesus has promised, we can let go. If we are able to give things up to God, to take on Jesus' easy yoke and light burden, relief will come. And lastly, some of us don't think that we actually deserve God's help. Our weariness and our burdens tell us that we're not human like everyone else, but that we are somehow fatally flawed and undeserving, not worthy of help. We see ourselves as too broken to be of any use or value. But remember, God never, ever sees us this way. God knows where we are broken. God knows where we are hurting and chafing under our burden. And God wants to take that burden from us and give us rest. So, what should we do? How should we respond to the gracious, loving invitation Jesus offers when he says, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Perhaps we should trust the living word and believe that Jesus will do what he says he will do. If we go to Jesus and ask for help with our weariness, and heavy burdens, and exhaustion. Jesus will give us rest. He says, I will give you rest. Believe it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now stand and affirm our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into him. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our closing hymn is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, page 271 in the blue book. And now for our benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be gracious and kind to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.